what I found was really, it really startled me. And it was like one of the real major hit for me. Was that it wasn't about the themes. It wasn't about the fact that they were playing Batman, or that they were playing Ninja Turtles, or that they were playing uh, pirates. It wasn't about the themes per se. Those were second. It wasn't the quality of graphics. It wasn't the quality of sound. Those things all participated, right? I'm not denying that for a second. But it was something about the way that the game challenged the child in a way that led to a frustration, in a way that led to an opportunity to search for resources, bring those resources to bear on that frustration, therefore have a sense of accomplishment, and power through that frustration to renewal to be able to play games more. That dynamic underlies why kids love to play games. And I started to test that and see that. It became really clear to me that, you, for example, they would bump up against something and they'd be stuck. They're frustrated. How do I go forward? They can only do that so long before they say, the heck with this thing. What do they do? But what would tend to happen is in the, in the, in the Nintendo games that fit for the kids with the right age game, right when they bump into that wall of frustration, they could freeze the game, pause, jump to another screen, and, and say, well, I want to talk to this consultant with what does he have to say about this. Well, wait a minute, I'll try the magic potion. Bring two drops of magic potion, and I'll come back and see if that gets me through. Or I'll try, or I'll try, and they started to try and experiment with which of these resources would be applicable to enabling them to blow through that frustration zone, at which point they step into a new dimension of the game, renewed, recharged, and challenged. And to me, this was powerful because they were manipulating many different logical types, many levels of influence. They were jumping offline, getting resources, bringing things back. They were using their own frustration as the barometer of how to play the game. And to me, what I saw when I watched these kids, and all of a sudden I kind of fell into it, was these kids were practicing the future. And that if they had a relationship like that, to their frustration and challenges as they bumped into the world they were trying to relate to outside. I think there were any. One question I have, the powerful one for me is the next step. Is what do they think about their ability to go out of the bubble? Turn it off and go to the school the next day and they can class on a lot of people in line with depression. They carry through those are they aware of their abilities and their well, or are they put aside for the next time they go back in their problem? There's no relate between them. That's right. There is not much transfer right now. I'm suggesting that the process that makes them enjoy the Nintendo game is so immediately apprehendable, palpable, and usable by them because it's the same thing they use to learn to walk or learn to learn the language. That level of differentiation and participation is it's on a continuum with the nature of the way their nervous system and that, yeah, when they get into school, there is no way, there is no interface between that natural process of differentiation and the process of relating to a world organized from an outer point of view, not from the point of view of trying to relate to the community. And that what we're trying to do, prove that it is, trying to build a bridge between that, that reconciles how the outside world works with how this nervous system can learn to still trust itself, still trust how it learns to learn and cohere out into that. People don't tell you how they walk at it. No. No, but then again, uh, learning to forget that time. One of the major distinctions, though, about intellectual knowledge versus something like that is our sensory systems and our perceptual systems, all of natural evolution, has peaked our ability to be here now. To learn proprioceptively through touching things, through being able to hear differences and see differences. The problem with all of the world of knowledge is it's about not now. We don't have any, we don't have any contact with it in the same sense that we do. Maybe this is a logical time to pick that Does that sound good? Sure, have to do that. So 10 minutes, 42. The world of knowledge is not now, in terms of the experience. Knowing it now. Okay. That's not a fact. Knowing it now. I think it's not so much that it's not.